Okay. Lock, yeah, guys, it's so weird. Locke is in our ears, but you guys can't hear her. It's like a And that's one. so weird. Well, yeah. Is that different? Like, Locke's always in my ears. I don't she know says rude. She says that. rude. <laughs> um, now I feel obligated to like, 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 like communicate everything that she says to everyone in chat. This is weird. <laughs> she says I don't need to do that. Okay, okay, we're good. <laughs> anyway, audio teleprompter. She's yeah, exactly. Audio prompter. Exactly. Audio prompter. <laughs> That's good. I wait. Wasn't that a band? Audio slave. Oh yeah. I'm kidding. I love them. Audio. Anyway, hi, hi, hello. Welcome to the Secret Adventure Society presents Spilling the L featuring uh, uh, G uh, Ranger Goon. Goon, what's your name? Ra Go ah, Goon. Something Ra there. It's it's Ranger Goon. Ranger it's Goon. Ranger Goon. Goon. <laughs> yes. And also Rothmar and also me. Hi. Welcome. Hello. We hope you all have had a wonderful week so far. We hope you all continue to have a wonderful week post hence. Post haste. Um, post, yeah, post haste. But anyway. Oh my our, god, Augustus. Uh, coming week in the past. Augustus needs healing, is what I just noticed. Oh, are you looking at the at D and D Beyond? <laughs> yeah, yeah for a little bit. It's it's like a I got a I'm at like twenty five out of thirty seven. It's fine. Yeah, but like that's fair. You're squishy. That is a third of my health. <laughs> what if you guys are still and you guys are still um, I, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but like you're still in a in a in, in, a, a, in the dungeon in, in a dungeon, yeah, in, in a dungeon. dangerous place to live. To be. It's a How dangerous place to only have 25 dungeon. health. What like, if chat could heal us? Like, yeah. Like Peter I would, Pan. I would never allow that. <laughs> well, they had to believe hard enough. You have like to. A thousand, <laughs> a thousand biddies for uh, temp HP. Temp so it's HP. not even right. like real healing. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, um, it's like, like three or four <laughs> extra HP on this round of combat. Yeah, it's, it's maybe plus four. It's one D four to your next roll. Oh, it's guidance. Just a little, like a little guidance. It's yeah. guidance. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, chat could be a cleric. I could see chat being a cleric. Or bards. They could be bards. It's not guidance. Chat. It's inspiration. Chat, chat is, a, there we go. chat is a bard. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if any, if anybody's going to take anything away from this, it's just that we just made the discovery that chat is a bard. Chat Always, bar. we're, we're unanimously bar. making Twitch chat the um, Grecian chorus. So, <sighs> like, yeah, you're like the audience, but you're also part of the play itself. Mm -hmm. The Odyssey, audience. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that. good. I don't mm, cut that. Not, let's let's not let's not add that in the final product. Let's cut. We, we can we can tweak it. Good thing we're not doing this live. Anyway, welcome <laughs> to spilling the this. ale. Uh, thank you all so, so, so incredibly much for joining us. Uh, we have some questions that you guys have for Goon and Hrothmar here, and we're going to be getting to those, and I've got a couple of questions of my own. And if you have, uh, if you have questions that you would like to ask Goon and Hrothmar and Slash or Q and Augustus, uh, please, uh, let's see, if you scroll up in chat or if you hit an exclamation point SAS questions in chat, there will be a link to a, a website called Slido, and you can submit your questions there, and we will go through those as the evening progresses and talk about hopefully all of them. So talk about let's give them something to talk about. Let's let's give them something to talk about post post haste post haste. Yeah, post po post post haste would be a good idea for like a toothpaste brand. I'm distracted. Anyway, um, <laughs> first question, and this is for me. This is from this is just w what Zach wants to know. Um, okay. It's it's no secret, and th there are some questions that we'll get to in chat that are similar to this, but ask something a little bit differently. Um, what do both of like? It's it's no secret that Q and Augustus are one of the favorite friendships of people who watch the show, uh, yes. of 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 the characters. D do you guys see that as a friendship, or do you guys see that as like a familial relationship? Do you guys see that as like a uh, like a a uh, father son relationship, or like a teacher mentee sort of relationship. Like, how how do you guys view the dynamic that each of you have as role players and as characters? I've got a locked in answer, but I kind of want to hear what Rothmar thinks. Yeah, sure. Um, like from Augustus's point of view, I think it definitely feels like uh like a cool uncle situation okay. like 
it's uh like i definitely see q as like a uh, like a younger person who like needs some guidance and he's here to help but also like not condescendingly not like wow you really need my help like i'm gonna be your dad no it's more like hey like, i'm here to spoil you a little bit and like load you up with pixie sticks in your pockets and send you home to dad afterwards like <laughs> while also like I giving have like unrequested life advice at any given time like that's sort of what it feels like to me at least no that's perfect that. that makes perfect sense what about you Gun? i think i think um that 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 augustus and q are kind of like carl and russell from up oh my god if carl was not a grumpy old man if he was well okay if the depressing first 10 minutes of up didn't happen, I think it would be Carl and Russell. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like if, if, if Carl was just always single and was just a very curious, adventurous person that just grew up that way, that's Augustus. And then Russell as Q. I like that a lot. That's a very, that's, I, I never would have, I never would have put that together, but that's, that's very, I can also see like if that first 10 minutes didn't happen and Carl didn't have some of his, um, uh, grumpiness yeah yeah some his some tragic grumpiness so one of the questions that someone sent in is actually about that and it's for Karathmar. did <laughs> did you or did you not know how effectively the i think my best friend is a nine-year-old was going to emotionally destroy all bro tp sas shippers I, oh that's that's fine. from anonymous uh I, <laughs> <laughs> I think um i don't know it's one of those things where like there's there's a few things to unpack, and I think the biggest one is that, like, um, close male friendships don't have to result in romantic relationships, if that makes sense. Like, you can just be, like, good fucking buddies with somebody, and you don't have to make out. Mm-hmm. Also, he's nine. Like, that wasn't on the table <laughs> to begin with. Like, <laughs> he's... That's, like, pretty... That, I think that's, like, the first thing to overcome yeah. is, like... Um, but yeah, I don't know. I like guess as, as far as like them just being like good friends and stuff, I think it, it makes sense because he's he's super young. And like, I know that kobolds don't exactly have like a super duper long life, but neither do turtles. And so it's this kind of like uh, kindred experience of like neither of us is here for very long. So uh, we almost need to like accelerate how much we help each other out, if that makes sense. So that's very, that's very sweet, but I know what Goon's about to say. Well, no, 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 because I, I, I never really came back to that argument because because you you are correct. Kobolds can live to about 120, 130, 150 years. They typically don't because they right. typically just get murdered. <laughs> um, and that's why if, if one lives to pass, I think, like 80 or something like that, they become what's known as a, as a great worm, WYRM. So I looked at, into that because you are actually exactly correct in how you responded to me that day uh about being like kobolds do live a long time it's just it's that they have the capacity to that typically don't because of the society that they grow up in and q has been ejected from that society and has had now turtles don't live a very long time i think they only live like 50 to 60 years and it's, it's surprisingly short yeah, yeah. i think they'd be like 400 dwarves or something like nope it's based on the fact that like irl turtles can live like 200 years you know yeah but um i don't remember what i was i was gonna add that to originally rothmar's point oh <laughs> yes that guy love uh it, like i love q and augustus's relationship for that exact reason is that there's not enough and, and it came naturally we didn't decide that we were going to do this but there's not enough um uh me platonic male friendships shown with 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 positive positivity surrounding it the way i think that q and augustus have have evolved and and i don't know, I, I like that about it yeah yeah, we I haven't talked to... off stream ever. There's no like DMs or uh, we do have a like a you know D and D group Discord where we talk about notes and stuff. But like we've never actually discussed like character dynamics or anything behind the screen. It's it's usually like it all just plays out on screen how it plays out like uh, real life would essentially. No, and... Locke, Locke and I never discussed. No, never. 
No, <laughs> well, I haven't been a part of that. Sit, but okay. <laughs> I <can speak> for <laughs> myself. <laughs> but I mean, like, just just speaking specifically about the characters at hand, I think that really speaks to <laughs> how good of role players you guys are, and like how um, how how you two were able to al almost recognize this important friendship dynamic that you don't think is represented enough and you're able to craft this beautiful thing out of it. I think the age difference nice to the other person. That's the crazy thing to me. It's not like, oh, here's some wild like crazy off the wall idea like this is how friends can be. It's literally just right. like, hey, wow, this kid might get murdered uh and <laughs> needs some life advice. Like I'm going to help him out. With this like kid no wears a skull and has a voice yeah. in his head. What? <laughs> kid's, kid's got some fucking issues. And it's like, all right, let's help him. And I do think yeah. that that I w I didn't mean for Q to be as as young as he is because again he's he's mature for a kobold. Mm -hmm. It just kind of happened. I think it was a niche that the group needed, and the way the group treated him from the first couple episodes, it, it kind of. That's that's what is good about the role play is that everybody in this group has kind of responded to how the other people act and have kind of feel, filled niche as well, but also made sure that they didn't change their core character. Right. That's I I think we're in the weeds now. It to other characters. <laughs> right. Well, I mean that's fine. That's what the show is for: the weeds and and drinking and spilling ale in it. But I think I think specifically what happened. I think Pierce actually said "little kid," and that was the end of it. You guys just yes and did yeah, and. True. Yeah, that was, I think that's just how it went. <laughs> that's yeah. such about right, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I always wanted him to. We we talked about the Buster Bluth and, and on plenty of uh, spill spilling the ale. So he's always going to have a bit of no no pun intended arrested development. Right. But the actual childlike nature was not in. Yeah, that's and that's another one of those beautiful things that just happens. Um, this question it's actually from two different people. Uh, it's actually like a, a two part sort of deal. Uh, anonymous and i think it's from two different people uh anonymous asks um q is kes mom now and also who is dad <laughs> to q he's been latching on to augustus but he's also latching on to pierce as well so like what is what is how does q see his is is there a parental dynamic within the group <laughs> so i have I have an answer for this that I don't know that I've even fully formulated myself and maybe not the best person to even answer this. Uh, but I do think that like our perception of, of familiar relational relationships is so skewed towards the nuclear family that like we sometimes have a hard time even wrapping our heads around like a, a group without us being like mom, dad, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, even in our own personal uh, IRL friend group, Zach, the ones that we hang out with in, in real life, there are, there are people in there that's like, whoa, you're my brother, you're my sister. And then your dad and your mom, you know, like, like that, that's just kind of how we skew to it. But I do think that like this particular group is a good example. I, again, I, I'm, I know that I play the, the childlike character. And so this is, I'm not blaming the anonymous for thinking that, but I, d I don't know if Q is thinking that way, honestly. Um, I think that Augustus definitely did step into a fatherhood type of role for Q, especially one who, uh, being that he had just so recently, uh, relatively recently, actually, you guys don't know how long uh, ago his mother died, but lost everyone in his family. Uh, so Augustus did do that, but as far as Pier Pierce and Casco, I, if you were going to put them into the nuclear family thing, I do think they are more of an older brother, older sister uh, than they are a mom, new mommy or new daddy. I do think that like they're going to get in trouble. They're going to get pissed off at his antics. They're going to like get each other in trouble. I mean, he's still got like other. six fireballs left. So yeah, there's definitely going to be some trouble. <laughs> oh yeah, Seven. at least six troubles. Seven? Okay. Seven. You're not going to talk me out of <laughs> Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> the seven troubles of Cubone. Um, <laughs> Coon's got a, an advent calendar with small chocolates <laughs> for each fireball he has left. And he's like, oh, no. I, I don't, don't, but I will. <laughs> oh. But yes, that's, that's, that's how I feel about it is that if you're going to prescribe the familial and not found familial things, then yeah, older brother, older sister. And, and and crazy uncle. 
I dig it. Brock uh, did you say you have a terrible answer? Is that is that was that to I this do question? I have a terrible answer for this. So, uh, full disclaimer: I am the I am the product of like multiple divorces growing up. Um, from my perspective, <laughs> it's, if we're going to keep it in like the nuclear family, um, like narrative, it very much feels like Cass is sort of like a stepmom, uh, and Q- and <laughs> Augustus is like very much a dad figure like like straight up and down dad figure and then here comes pierce with like authority but no like real <laughs> relation at all and he's he's that weird stepdad who you thought what was only going to be a one night stand but he keeps showing up <laughs> he keeps it oh he's the brad oh you know, my brad, god all the dads yeah. and brads from the green day song mm-hmm. <laughs> like he, he's gonna call you chief and like that's what that looks like to me. i don't know <laughs> hey, how to describe it it's just like it's not a negative thing. It's just like, no. like, hey, I'm an authority figure now. And it's like, are, are you? Okay. <laughs> that's, that's fine. As someone who grew up with a, <laughs> a, a stepdad who was like, yeah, yes, I get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, weird, like, it's not, it's a, I don't know how else to put it. It's just, he's going to call you chief or sport <laughs> or champ or something. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, so this is actually uh, another of two questions rolled into one, but, uh, they're both anonymous. Um, put your names on the questions, please. You don't have to, but still, I mean, it's just nice. We well, like to... we, we, sometimes we like anonymity. Anonymity. An- anonymity. Um, so for both, uh, what is your process for creating a character? How do you arrive at what you want to play? And then the other question was, what made you pick, uh, the race that your character is? Okay. Uh, I went. I think I went first the last time. Good. Do you want okay. To uh, what was the first part of the question? Uh, <laughs> sorry. It's it's basically all rolled into one, but it's uh, what is your process for creating a character uh, or um, how do you arrive at what it is you want to play? And that's sort of the same thing. It's like what made you... The other question was what made you pick the race that your character is? Um. So... I have no um, uh, set character creation. Um, you can hear my dog tea kettling in the background. Um, <laughs> I have no set character creation thing. It's it's pretty much. I, I I'm pretty sure I'm dealing with some undiagnosed ADHD of which I have a uh, uh, appointment for. So we'll see. Um, Fingers crossed. Uh, yeah. Uh, hold on. It's okay. And, I interrupted and, you. I, I know it, how that goes. No, no, no. Okay. That's amazing. So I don't have a single thing. It's it's just whatever comes to me at the time. With Q specifically, it was the, the actually the same way as um, uh, 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 Sanders LeBlanc, uh, or Sanders Blanc, was in the middle of the night. I texted Zach, and I was like, what if this? And he was like, fuck yes, this. Um, that, that's exactly how it went. <laughs> I cannot yeah. stress that enough. Both times, that's exactly what happened. Yes. Um, and I remember laying down two separate beds because we were going through some family stuff. I remember both times where I was like three o'clock in the morning and I was like, Zach, okay, you know, you're going to do the stream. Here's what it is. Here's my uh, answer. And he was just like, fuck yes. Um, usually, though, I do try to pick what, what class I want to play and then um, a race that I think wouldn't normally fit that role. And so um, Q was actually supposed to be a barbarian. Uh, kobolds are not uh, strength based. So that's why I picked Kobold. Warlock came later, uh, but he was originally supposed to be a barbarian, which is which still shows in his personality a lot. Um, and I, I picked Kobold because I thought low strength barbarian. We'll try to we'll have to figure something out. That That is my shtick for creating characters is pick what class you want to play and try to make it weird. So that answered kind of both the question. Yeah. And um, it's an effective one. Yeah. It, it works. Okay. That's basically how I do it too, to be honest, is I, I try and find a, a class or, or, a, or a, like a race class situation that uh, just doesn't or shouldn't work and then try and justify why it can or should. So like, um, my my favorite one I've ever made was this um, battle bard that I made because bards are usually not renowned at their combat prowess, even though they're like dexterous and good with bows and all this other stuff. Like 
they're usually just kind of weak or like they're not very good at, at, at combat stuff. And so instead of being like, I'm going to make a, good, a bar that's good at combat, I said, I'm going to make a bar that's bad at magic and combat. Like I made, <laughs> I made it the worst of both worlds. Um, and I had, I've never had so much fun with the character before. It was, uh, it was a bard who was classically trained in the like theater half of being a bard. So he was very like, pressed in digitation and like flickering lights and like illusion and so it was all that's like like essentially stage magic that couldn't hurt anyone or had no real combat use um and then for the combat half of things he was trained with a sword and a shield and so he could bang on his shield for like a musical instrument to give like inspiration and stuff but he had terrible stats for that um stuff and things so he was terrible at combat and he was terrible at magic um and the fun of the character was trying to make it work right so you'd get into combat and um, essentially be like, all right, all I can do is um, make an illusion. So I would I would make an illusion to like quickly distract the guy that I'm fighting and then gain like, uh, like he would realize that it's an illusion when I attacked him or something. So it's like, like it was indirect combat. And so um, I like to do a lot of that, I think, where it's like, uh, how do I put that into words succinctly? Um, is it almost like- I like to make- I like to make characters that are are going to fail. Like they're not going to do well. Like, like not min maxing. Like min min minning uh, <laughs> character, and and really creating a situation where it's like I am not going to do well, and I can't just rely on like a good roll, or like I'm good at strength. Like I can't rely on those, and I have to be creative in the moment. And it, it creates more like um, dynamic role play situations in order to like overcome this terrible situation, which is all situations with this character that I made that is just completely <laughs> underwhelming. Um, when it comes to Augustus, uh, this was actually kind of a break from that. Uh, I have never played a caster and historically I just really don't like casters. I don't like tracking spells. I don't like, I don't like being ranged. Like I just want someone to hit me in the face and then I want to punch them in the face back. <laughs> like that just feels right to me. Um, so Augustus was a departure from that, and I was like, I'm gonna play an Augustus, I'm gonna play a mage, uh, a wizard, and he's gonna have no HP. And initially he was, uh, with that character design of min minning, um, he was gonna be an um, abjuration wizard, so it's all protection based, so he can't even combat. Like, not only does he not have any HP and he's really bad at combat, um, he's only good at defense on top of that. And that's kind of where the turtle came from. Uh, as a race, I was like, "What's the most defensive race?" And I'm like, "Let's play a turtle." Um, so, which did boost. You know, you had a, a, a an AC automatically that that's two points yeah. greater than what may, uh, wizards usually get. It's so, true, yeah. and it did work out. So, I mean, it like it, in that sense, it did work out a little bit. But like, he he wasn't very good at combat. And after after a few weeks, I, that's when we started swerving Augustus into evocation because it was like. I'm useless and bored in combat. Like I can, <laughs> I can make a shield it's, and uh, it's not, it's not healing. <laughs> it's not really damage. I'm like, okay, we need to right. learn some stuff to be more relevant here. So, right. That is, that's, that's how I remember it happening too. But it's, it's so interesting that both of you said the most important thing to you, like the thing that you think about when you're creating a character, it seems like almost the last thing you think about is stats. Like it's mm -hmm. as, is like the, the nitty gritty, role uh, the 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 nitty-gritty like uh gameplay mechanics of it it seems like mm -hmm. the thing that's most important to both of you is creating a character that is um th that's that's playable that's role playable if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's something that both of you excel at i think yeah, uh, yeah i think Trothmar and i the, and that's why q and augustus have such good energy together i think i, I Q did end up being sort of min maxed in when we switched him over to Warlock because I didn't right. I didn't I didn't change but yes the bar the the bar the barbarian thing was very much a very similar way of, of Frothmar's uh, way of thinking in that like make a character that's bad at something because I I am a true believer of that bad roles make a good D and D game mm, you know that's true. Now one nothing fun you, ever came of good rolls. <laughs> like, you don't talk about your natural twenty unless it was the natural twenty that killed the monster. You know, unless it was the natural twenty that like made the entire campaign. But every session you talk about what you fucked up and like <laughs> what happened badly. And so I I just find more fun in that. 
Uh, just yeah. to prove your point, Kess has rolled a lot of natural 20s, but what's the thing we talk about? Yep. That clutch natural one, or that, that, yep. that anti-clutch natural one. Anti-clutches. Yeah, anti-clutches. Yeah. That's, that's good. And, like, outside of d and I am a bit of a mid-maxer, so, like, in a way... This is I your reprieve. Of course, my... It is my reprieve. I think it's almost like a, a way to prevent me from doing such activities in, in a storytelling environment like D&D is I feel the need to min-min. Like, I'm, like, if I min-maxed even a little bit, it would just be like, I wouldn't be having as much fun, uh, I think. Because like, like Goon said, it's like bad roles are the fun ones. And so if I make a bad character then like that's going to happen more often and then I'll have fun. I have more fun role playing than I do killing the monster or like, you know, breezing through this combat scenario. It's like I have more fun when it's like I have no spells that can hurt anybody. I have no HP. Everyone is dead. I'm the only one alive. And my <laughs> giant suit of armor is like filling up the exit and is going to punch me in the face. Like, what do I do? Like, that sounds way more interesting for my brain to grapple with than like, yep, sure. Haha, <laughs> I'm going to hit it with, you know, a big mace. Take that. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I love what you said about give, like giving yourself a force to work around because I think that every everything I do, like, I try to, to, to force that because I'm, I, I feel that, I felt that when you said that, like, your brain wants to try to make it easy for you in min-max and so you have to force yeah. yourself to. Yeah, like you create the framework where you can't do that, so it's not yep. even on the docket. Like I don't even, I don't when I when we start playing, I don't even think about, oh, you know, what can I do better? It's like I'm I'm just here, yep. and I'm just this character, and we'll see how it goes. Just just experiencing the the world before you, and it's mm -hmm. it's a that's great for creativity. Oh, uh, we actually just got this question in, also from anonymous. If you could pick another class for your characters, what would you pick? Would you guys ever mm -hmm. consider multi classing? Oh, uh, I've got a spoilers one for this one, if you want. Uh, I think in the next one shot we do, I'm going to do a multi-class because I find multi-classing to be really funny. Uh, Interesting. Because I should really the... <laughs> write that. Yeah, <laughs> you get on that. That's... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, no, you're good. But in the spirit of like min min minning, right? Like, I've been I've been contemplating what to make for the next character, and I'm not going to tell you any details uh, other than what I've told Zach already, which is, I want I want a barbarian with the the, the lowest intelligence he'll allow me min max or multi classed into uh, a wizard. So the rage I want the, mage. I want, the, I want the dumbest barbarian wizard. That you can possibly make. <laughs> I or love the, that. I forgot we had talked about this. Barbarian. <laughs> the the dumbest barbarian wizard. And the dumbest wizard. Rage mage. And just like I've been playing with like where to take I would that. like to like, mage. I'll just sit there in the shower and just like think about things. And I'm like, Did you say I would like to mage? I That's did. Good shit. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, I don't know. Like, I, I want this idea of like this barbarian that like went to school to try and learn how to be a wizard and obviously like flunked out or something. But like he showed up enough to <laughs> class to like learn yeah. how to do some spells and stuff. And it's like, well, how did you learn that? And it's like, you don't have to know how to read to cast a spell. You pay, you pay, so you bully some nerd or you pay him, you know, beat up his lunch money kind of thing. And you get him to do your homework for you. And then she just teaches you like the, the verbal portions. And I have no idea how to read. I have no idea how to learn new spells, but like if some nerd orally teaches it to me, I might be able to retain it. And that sounds so funny to me. Like you're like the Nelson Muntz of wizards, something like that. Yes. Or like, what if what if you had like a rage mage, like a, a where instead of a spell book, you just had all your spells tattooed to your body. Right, That's but you a, can't read them. That's the big thing. Is like I have no idea what they like. Maybe it's a he just memorized how to pronounce. That's yeah, that's a good point. He memorizes like, what if they're just like symbols or something? It, basically, like that episode of It's Always Sunny where Charlie tries to write a commercial and it's just drawings. Basically, that. Yeah, oh. it's just like I don't like I don't know. I thought it was another language I was speaking, and it's like no, it's arcane. <laughs> like you're, you're summoning it. Like I thought it was I don't know. I thought it was cobalt or some shit. Oh man, I love that. I like that. Okay, I really, really want to get that one shot together now because I want to see this character played out. 
Uh, what yes, about you? I, I would multi-class uh, for sure. What about you? Uh, 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 yeah, to take keep it with Q, you know, I, I, I don't want to say like whether or not he will or won't multi-class because I, I, I'm, I'm very much of the mind is like every session provides a new opportunity. Um, I would be open to it though. Like if, if, if I feel like an opportunity, um, opens itself up as far as Q does uh i'm i'm not anti multi-class i i enjoyed it a lot i have actually uh well no i did i did multi-class one character i typically don't but i'm not against it is i, I guess what i was saying um as far as q if he we talked about if he wasn't a warlock he'd be a barbarian um which i think was the first part of the question was was what would they be if they weren't what they were well, um, it's uh, uh, it's a little bit of that, and also like, would you ever consider multi-classing? Okay. If you could pick another class for your characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think um, Q Q could get some rage out. I don't think he actually has the ability to because you have to have a minimum of uh, uh, like thirteen in strength, and his strength is seven. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I I do think that like he has the opportunity for like rogue. Uh, Rogue fighter, sorcerer, probably bard, but probably not. Uh, <laughs> I could see all that for Q and, and, and possibilities. Um, if I wasn't playing Q uh, in this in this particular actual group right now, if I was playing with like a different character, um, then I would probably try to f make a funky uh, 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 multi class uh, 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 with a. Uh, I don't know. Probably a paladin would be really good in this in this group. Mm -hmm. A paladin would be interesting in this group, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Just like the like a, like a tavern brawler, uh, paladin. I don't know. I think it'd be interesting. Very very interesting. Uh, next question. I think. Hold on. We had one and I lost it. Oh God. Uh, oh, oh. Also from anonymous. Q has been super protective of Kess, and it's been really cute. Spelled with a K. Um, did oh. this settle? Yeah. Did this settle in after she died or is he just wanting to protect everyone now? Um, he do protect. Um, he do protect. He do protect. <laughs> I think Q has dealt with, a, uh, well, I, say, I would say a lot of life, life, damn, loss in his life. <laughs> life. Probably life too, honestly. <laughs> a lot of life. <laughs> He's, he's um, dealt with a lot of loss in his life. And, and when I say that, it was really just the one big loss, but that's all he had, right? Like, um, if you lose, if you only have one thing and you lose one thing, you've lost 100% of your things. Um, and I think that, like, Kess scared him, uh, which I wasn't even there for that episode. So Q couldn't really, like, full on react. Well, I mean, not that, you know, you, you, you know what I mean? Totally. Um, but I do think that he has some like tenuous relationships, um, tenuous connections in his relationships, and he's always afraid of people leaving him, not by choice. Uh, and I think that that comes out with with Cass because she has been so. I mean, she was one of the first. I you know, Jendi showed Q the first bit of affection, but then when once they got to the boat. Um, other than, you know, Augustus was there, but, but, oh, it was right before the boat. Sorry. Kess transformed into the, um, Cobalt. I think it, that was in the pub right before we got on the boat. Yeah. So like literally got on his level to talk. So Augustus always talked down, but not, not talked down, but you know what I mean? Like talked as a, mm -hmm. as a, as an, uh, above figure, like Kess literally got on his level to talk to him. And I don't think... Q ever saw that, so he has a very specific connection to Cass, and so is why sh why he is protective of her. Um, but yes, he also do protect everyone except for maybe Pierce because I think he has decided Pierce uh, does not want that and was would like <laughs> to not be around him, and so he's a little nervous around Pierce. I mean that tracks. That tracks. Yeah. Uh um, let's see. Next question. This is also from Anonymous. Um, what is your favorite Gus and Q interaction? 
don't have to narrow it down to one, I don't think. But let's just let's 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 talk about some of those some of those good Gus Q interactions. And also those of you in chat, if you would like to chime in on this as well, I am curious to see. Yes, I would love I to love, see. I love every time Gus and Q start um uh, for lack of a better word, just like riffing off each other, and it just drives Pierce up the wall. Like Yes. When it's just like you know, uh, Q uses a funny turn of phrase on something. Like, this could also be interpreted in a different way if I wasn't from your culture and knew better. And then Augustus just says yes to it. And it's like, that's correct. And Pierce is like, God damn it. Like, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's always how it goes. Yeah. Yes, be because steve has, has and pierce especially has perfected the no and but in a good way right like, mm -hmm. he right. he's the only person i've seen not maybe not the only ever but like he he's definitely someone that that has and this is not the answer to the question but i wanted to piggyback off that and just compliment steve -O sure because he does no and um and that's really hard to do and doesn't come naturally to a lot of people but he doesn't shut down he he completely stonewalls everything you have to say, but in a way that that the scene still continues, and that's that's, that's so hard. hard. That's so hard to do. It's it's mm. like Pierce hates everything that Steve O loves. Yes, and and like he he knows that, and so he's able to use that in order to pull off what you I mean what you correctly put as like a miracle of improv, which is no end. No end. Um, that's 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 a that's a very good point. Yeah, because I mean, like, there you can no but in in improv, and now I've gotten way too technical for even me because I don't understand it. But like, you can no but occasionally in in improv, but he no ends and it's fucking wild. Um, as far as Q Q Gustus moments, um, I think I I, I have a, a special a soft spot for every time uh, Q has cast fly on uh gus mm -hmm. uh i don't know if it's my favorite moments but I, I i do i try to do it i've i've tried to do it a couple times because i just love this image of this tiny little lizard dude flying with this you know very large 400 pound turtle man and i uh anybody any of the artistically inclined people if you want to <laughs> if, if you want to see the biggest smile on my face that's the art i would go for but so i have i have um, uh, uh, a soft spot for those moments, and that's why I kind of try to make them happen as much as I can. I like it. I I also really really enjoy th the way that Augustus talks about Q when Q is not listening. That's it's good. Like the 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 way that, uh, for example, the most one of the most recent examples is the uh, the fireball necklace fiasco that we clipped and put on twitter that was so fucking genius but uh, <laughs> yes oh no is, not with the yeah no not with the necklace it's just like <laughs> it's this 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 knowledge that he is um he's put himself in a dangerous situation caring for this this lizard child who has a fireball necklace but he's just like i'm able to teach him some good and maybe maybe i won't die um that's that's sort of it seems how uh, augusta streets <laughs> treats treats uh, Q when Q is not listening. Sparkles has, has mentioned that Augustus does have a very good job of of being able to calmly wrangle Q um, without right. without negating him and and like treating him as a companion or really I would say like a pet or I think most mages have a familiar and I think, I think Augustus or Q has is like Augustus's piece of shit familiar. Um, it doesn't stay in line or some shit like that, but, um, <laughs> I, that is a good one, Sparkle. I like, I'm not the moderator here. I don't know why I'm doing that, but no, feel free. This, I mean, <laughs> I'm barely the moderator. I'm just kind of here. Um, did you guys have anything at, uh, to add to that question before we moved on? Um, no, I think that's, that's my favorite for sure. Yeah. Uh, so for Goon. Uh, I listened to the playlist for Q you posted on Twitter. What is your process for choosing the songs? Now, before he answers, I I want to point out to all of you that I wish there was a career <laughs> where you could uh, just 
basically be a DJ for D&D characters. I, I have never encountered anyone who so eloquently captures a character with songs that already exist as Goon does. It is bonkers, <laughs> but I will let you speak now. Uh, I'm uncomfortable with compliments. Um, <laughs> but I've given I, you that compliment before. I know, and the, it hurts worse every time. Uh, I, 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 I'm a fan of music. I, I am as, I think that, oh, I, I, I don't know. There's a lot of people that are passionate with music and very talented. Just say no you, that's what I do. Um, there are a lot of people that are very talented with their ability to, to capture a moment or a feeling or something with music. And I can't, um, with my own, I, I've, I've tried to learn how to play music and I, I've failed at it multiple times. Um, probably because of that undiagnosed ADHD we talked about. We'll see. Um, but I do think that I have such a passion and a respect for how other people have captured moments and feelings that I, myself, who grew up a very lonely, lonely child, felt. And so I, I don't know. Um, as far as Q's playlist, we'll get straight. I just enjoy hearing what I feel like the artist intended in a song. And if that if a character has given me that feeling, I will find that song and I'll pick two, two to three songs that really, really feel like that character. And then I will start doing the dumbest thing, which is Spotify will start recommending songs. And then I will spend hours. I mean, just a lot of my hyper fixation time just going through listening to 30, 45 seconds of a song. A lot of them I know already, but just to see if, if it gives me that mood for that character. And I have literally spent every every playlist I've ever done. I've, I've probably spent four or five hours on each playlist, which is dumb. That is not a good way to spend time. I don't make money from this. It's just a, a hyper fixation that I do. I'm sorry, was, I'm going to stop you. I don't think that's dumb. I think that is one of your strongest things because it's one of your most empathetic things because it a lot like, first of all, it's something that you love, right? So don't say something you love is dumb. But second of all, it it is one of those things that you're so fucking good at because you're able to empathize with what an artist has created and make like transform it into something that you have created. That's very important to you. So like, I don't think that's dumb. I'm sorry. Not sorry. Well, I, I do appreciate it. And, and I, 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 I will, I'll take the compliment. It's hard. It's difficult. Um, take uh, it. Oh God, it's here. Um, I, it's just it's it's how I express things. Other people draw, other people do fan art. It's my version of fan art, I think, is what it is. No, you exactly. Sorry, luck. I, <laughs> I it's it's my version of fan art, and I, I love artists. I love people who do that, and and this is what I can give to a character. And so when I love a character, I do a playlist. Um, with cues specifically, there were a few songs. I was actually listening to it earlier, um, but there was a couple key songs that I started with. Um, and we can talk about them, but we can't play them, which is, a, I mean, like, not that we would just sit here and listen to music together. Although, if we could ever find a way to legally do that, I'm down. That's pretty chill. <laughs> I mean, that's I what I used to do on Mixer. On and just hang out. That's, that's <laughs> Chef Cell with Napster, my dude. Anyway. I know, uh, I know, I know. When it's One day, though. Um, Mama by My Chemical Romance, um, B Better Than Me and The Bird and the Worm were the first three songs that I started with. And, and then I just kind of bounced off of those and um, hit Mama by M My Chemical Romance was like number one. Like, I, I just felt like so good. This toxic relationship with the, this overbearing mother and this um, uh, person who is experiencing a ton of loss and trauma at the time and this manipulative relationship between the two people. And it's almost like a voice and says, it was just, if I, I didn't mean to create that into Q, but it was, it just expresses it. The bird and the worm was important to me um, with Q because he, uh, um, is, it, well, actually that'll tie with the Brobex better than me in that he has this, inferiority complex that he doesn't know. Uh, he doesn't know he has that, but he just thinks of himself as this... I mean, he's a kobold, right? He's he's essentially the scum of, like, the world. Everybody hates kobolds in-game, in-universe, in right? Like, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're like goblins. They're, like, just the thing that you kill. 
Um, so there's a big inferiority complex, and you you would see that. Uh, I'll post it again later for those of you guys who haven't haven't heard it. Um, you can see that in a lot of the songs. They all base off that inferiority complex, which Mama, uh, the Be- Better Than Me by the Probex, and um, the Bird and the Worm focus on. And now I've talked too much. Locke's crying in chat, though. That's always um, a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I, I like doing that. Thank you for the compliments. Bye. Well, logged off. <laughs> I, I Goon <laughs> so often Goon so often ends his thoughts with I've talked too much. Bye. Um but anyway, uh what about you, Rothmar? Do you have anything that like cause like Goon has talked about uh the the way that he instills characters with life via music. Do you have any mm-hmm. any form of art, whether it be music or art or film or anything else, that when you are creating a character or when you're just thinking about other <clears throat> excuse me other creative endeavors do, do you sort of cross pollinate inspirations like that yes um for characters i usually base them off of a, a tv show or a character instead of anything else like, um historically you'd always see people promoting like oh if you're gonna make a new character you gotta base it off like the alignment chart you know like oh like what is their source of truth on how they react to certain situations and i never liked it because it seemed too rigid and like humanity is so much more robust than anything agreed you in a three chart um and so for me it was always like i would i would make a character and i would base it off of um like a head canon relationship if if two characters personalities could marry each other so like uh, for example, Augustus was roughly based off of Uncle Iroh mixed with um, just like a like a like an Uncle Buck kind of character, essentially. Where like you, he's you, neither of them, but it's basically like what he's kind of based on. Sure. You also mentioned Pacha when we were uh, originally talking and about Pacha, the, yeah, yeah uh, from Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, and it's just like it, it just helps a little bit. So as far as like using sources of inspiration for it, like I would use film uh, or characters to help make a character's like personality to help determine like how they're going to react to things. Can I just um, stop you for a second? Because you have you've you've named three older put upon people who adopt a young yeah. bratty asshole. You and I did yeah. not create these two characters to gr- together. <laughs> no, we didn't. But like, it just worked it, out great. It, it, it just worked perfectly. out perfectly. The three people that you named all like all take a uncle role in, in, over like some objectively scary, horrible yeah. people. <laughs> and, and try and help them be better. Yes. Guys, mm-hmm. D&D is beautiful and art and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> otherwise this wouldn't happen. Um, God, I had another thought, but Goon just blew my mind. Um, Rothmar blew mine. I just blew you. Wait, <laughs> I just not tonight. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I gotta. Yeah, I can't make it tonight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Locke's like, whoa. Anyway, he blew my mind, and I in turn forced it to your mind. I don't know right. if we should change the subject. What's the name of the uh, well, I know uh, something else I was going to say, like, I, I totally agree with uh, what Prothmar said about uh, alignment charts being too rigid. They are nifty. I think they're a good thing to think about. But with the caveat, when you're creating a character, at least when I'm creating a character or when I'm working with characters who are going to be played in a game that I'm running is um, <clears throat> you can you can create the alignment. But I like the idea that they can pretty much change even from session to session. Um, yeah. I, I feel like they're they're a good tool to have, but they are not gospel. They're not something that yeah. you stick to no matter what, just because the nature of life relevant. does not allow for such rigidity. Yeah, it, the part that was they're like not always relevant, where it's just like, right. wait a minute, um, you know, here's this lawful evil character, <clears throat> like cool. That that law that they follow isn't relevant here when we're just having a beer at the bar. Like you don't right. have to actively be a butthole. Like it's just when the when the situation calls for it. Right. And exactly. We've, we've seen a general shift in the in the community away from the alignment chart. Uh, there's a lot of people older in the community that 
they really stick to it. I I will say I have seen DMs use them in very good ways that aren't as toxic as I think that they can end up. <clears throat> oh, but, absolutely. Yeah, but I do think that the 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 Rothmar, you and you Zach, you you've hit the nail on the head. It's most of the way that people play now, it's just not relevant. It's not it's something that you need to stick to. It's a, maybe a good jumping off point, like you've said, Zach. Yeah. <clears throat> like but then it's fluid. One of the one of the good things, like one of the recent examples that comes to mind is in, in our game that we're running Goon um with uh, uh DN Desserts uh as the DM, she actually gave uh one of our uh our, our paladin in the group a uh, uh I, I forgot what the exact name of the weapon is, but it's basically a DD lightsaber. Mm -hmm. And if you are good aligned, it's it's it gets it gets its power from like the sun or something like that. And if you are good aligned, you can hear it speak to you. And I feel like that's a that's a really good use of that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um as as far as like building and creating characters, that's 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 not there's it's important to uh, allow f for growth. Does that make I, sense at all? I think with a good DM, yes, exactly. And I think with a good DM that you can trust, like my wife and 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 you, Zach. Uh, I I, uh, I think that they can kind of. So if you had a weapon like that, which that was in the module that we're running, um, if you have a weapon like that, like you can not have a written alignment but your your character your, your dm is if done well can kind of make decisions about what your character is if you have a dm you can trust if that makes sense sure it's it's more about the decisions that the character makes than right. the alignment that the character chose on session zero if that makes mm -hmm. sense um <clears throat> and dm should always take things like that into consideration at least in my opinion um Next question. How do the characters feel about the other characters in the show? Has anything changed since the last time this question was asked? So you two have both answered this question <laughs> independently, but a lot has happened since either of you have answered the question. So uh, just instead of like going through and listing how every, uh, how, how each of you feel about every character in the party, can, can we just do like a general sort of, uh, to use a term that Hrothmar loves, vibe check, just to see how how every like yeah how how you guys um how how you guys as characters feel at this at this exact moment in time knowing where you are knowing what you've just been through uh about the the, the other party or the other people in the party sure i i, th I think cues is, is simple like he is um tenuously like he he's he's watching his back constantly about shakeups um cat's almost dying two party members having just disappeared out of nowhere with his particular trauma like he is constantly he's going to cling closer to people and is going to like make sure that that as little happens that leads to a character's death or or disappearance or you know like he's worried about the people leaving him in his life right now. And I think that that is extremely important to, to cast. So he's insecurely attached is the word I've been trying to think of that my, that my wife has used recently. Um, he's insecurely attached. Um, and he's, he's wanting to try and, and re gain that confidence that he had when he started with the party. Holy shit. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. ow, my feelings. Oh, uh, <laughs> all right. Rothmar, what about, uh, what about Gus? Uh, Gus feels pretty much the same as I think he has been in the past, which is generally speaking, just like growing trust towards everyone unanimously. Um, he doesn't actually know anyone, right? Like there's no like previous, like I have a history with any of these people it's entirely volunteer like he's just chilling with some strangers and trying not to die uh essentially um i i do think like he's i wouldn't say getting frustrated with pierce but more like uh he's he's really really um not sure why pierce is being so like on edge about his um 
Augustus is like previous student being around like it is just not on his radar like it's it's essentially like if um, if you are vacationing in uh, some you know separate city that you don't live in and you run into an old college roommate and suddenly your uh, your current friend is like oh do you just want to talk with them all the time now and I'm like what is happening right now <laughs> like is this jealousy I don't know like it did do you hate them? Like, I don't know what, and he's just really confused. Um, but that's about it. That makes perfect sense. Um, hmm. So, uh, let's see. We have a couple more questions before we, before we end for the evening real quick to go back to the last question. Someone asked, are there any other playlists in the works? Goon. Hmm. Do you know I actually started a second Q playlist today? <laughs> uh, I call, I'm calling it ten, t- uh, temporarily calling it Q2 Electric Boogaloo. Oh my gosh. Um, but obviously it'll have a better name than that. I, I mean, I... I mean, do you want me to answer this honestly? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, answer it. Okay. However, it's I mean, it can just no, it can just be a quick yes people. or no. Like, I mean, okay, so <laughs> I, I yes, I, I when I like a character, I create playlists. There are a, there are playlists for for all the characters. Like we have them. I shared them in our Discord, but I do think that it's a personal um, thing. Uh, uh, to you know, that was a gift from me to those characters. Um, it, it I I did make them all, all playlists. Um, they're not official playlists for those characters, if that makes sense. They're just kind of how I I feel and how Q, Q feels and how like mood check. Speaking of vibe checks, um, so that's really I think up to the as far as what was the question? Are there more? Yeah, I don't know if they'll see the light of day. Is what I think. <laughs> okay, uh, that's up to the characters. But yes, they they exist. They're there, and Q two is. I mean, knowing my schedule and knowing how I do things, it's somewhere between two or three, two to three days to two to three months from being completed. Sure. Sure. Uh, next question. What will actually next to last question? What will Augustus do if his student is the one causing everything? Mm. You do not know. have to, if, if you don't, if you are not comfortable answering this, if you feel like that's something you'd rather say for the game, you do not have to. You can be as vague no, as you it, wish. I think it's one of those things where, like, I'm I'm trying to play it as close to Augustus as I possibly can. Where, like, I there are certain things that I'll stew on outside of the game, right? Where I'll I'll be doing the dishes or cooking dinner, and I'm like, man, what if this happens? Like, how would I react? Because, like, I don't know. Like, real real people do that, right? Like, you'd sit down and come up with God, millions yes. of fake scenarios that'll never happen, so you can perfectly have a script in your head for when it occurs. Like that. Oh wait, other people have people anxiety? Do. Yeah, that's fine, right? <laughs> um, but I think like with Augustus as as a character, it's not even on his radar. So like me as a player, I literally have put zero thought into it. Um, the whole like Augustus trying to be like Pierce, you're being weird right now. Um, that's the extent of any thought that I have put into it. So like if my student ends up being behind this, any reaction to it is going to be purely based on like the way that he finds out and the extent of what has happened. And like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, so, so like honest answer, not, not, uh, putting up a facade or anything straight up. I have not put any thought into it whatsoever. And if that turns out to be the case, then, We'll see how it goes. I hope it's not. <laughs> so. Very interesting. So uh, last question, uh, also from Anonymous. We know Augustus is going to be leaving. Are you guys prepared for the emotions? Have you guys been thinking about them out of character? And Harathmar, you just kind of answered this, yeah. but do, do you guys like, how, how, do you, how do you guys feel? And I guess it ultimately... This is a difficult question to answer because it ultimately depends on how it happens. But yeah. um, is is do, have you guys put any like you can just be be vague in the sense that have have you put any thought into how your character might react depending upon the situation? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've uh, <laughs> I've definitely been like really fucking sad and then just like running through like 
you know, what if I'm fucking dying and I'm in Q's arms and he has like, you know, five seconds to say his last words. And it has to be like some sort of meaningful handoff of like infinite wisdom in five seconds. Like, what would I say? And I'm like, I have shit. I'm drawing a blank. I have no idea. <laughs> like, I'm like, I hope that doesn't happen because I don't have anything prepared for that. <laughs> I've got macrons. <laughs> If he fades into the ether. <laughs> <laughs> so like I've had that thought, but like outside of that, um but not really, in all honesty. It's been a lot of just like uh sure. like I, I'm excited to cook dinner on Wednesdays and stop ordering food and like watch Netflix with Jess. Like <laughs> <that's what laughs> I'm just gonna I, uh... It's going to be tough. And I, I think to cope with it, I'm just focusing on like the positives of it uh, too. That's fair. That's very fair. Goon? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, there's definitely been been thoughts of it. I'm a lot like Ruffmar in that I don't actually think about what my characters do or don't do because it's hard for me to focus on their decision-making process when I'm not playing them. Um, I, I don't know why that is. Do what? I, it, it feel like I don't want to speak for you, but do you feel like sometimes it comes off as like prescriptive? Like, oh, I have thought of what I will say now, and then you say it, and then you kind of steer the party in that narrative. And I'm like, I, I don't think that's it, but I have had that thought, and 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 that is a fear of mine. That like, I th I think it's more to me like, I I've always been a. We'll see if it's the ADHD. I keep saying that, but like. I've always been a in the moment kind of person and that how like what what is happening is what's happening. And so it's hard for me to kind of plan ahead. And I know a lot of people that are very much very so the opposite. Um doesn't mean I don't have anxiety about the things. It just means that like pre-preparing it is almost impossible because I can't get into the thought process. And that and with Augustus leaving, that's a exactly my fear is that almost the same thing Rothmark said is that Q is going to not be emotional enough in that moment or not have the right response because Goon won't have like the right response. But I have started to begin to trust myself in roleplay scenarios in, mm -hmm. in, in thinking that at the time, like even if I'm not feeling the emotion, Q still can. Um, but it is going to depend a lot on how, how it goes. I have been thinking about it and that is one of the reasons why I've stressed tonight so much about Q's, uh, um, uh, what did I call him a second ago? Tenuous? No. Insecure attachments. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> In I was like, insecure fireballs? Um, so, yes, fireballs. Yeah, so he's insecurely attached. So this is going to break him. Like, it's, it's like losing, you know, I don't know, a really sad moment in a tv show where an uncle passes away or something uh, you know that kind something of thing yeah uh rothmar is what i'm talking about um yeah it's like it's like when you find out that there is going to be no Cuscotopia. <laughs> I, 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 i've still not gotten over it. over that you know <laughs> Wow, that's what you guys took away from that movie. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, we're, like, no, we're looking forward to it. Yeah. God, you know, when the sun hits it just right, those heels really sing. Yeah. You know? Absolutely sing. Uh, uh, God. And now it won't happen. Now it won't happen. That's where he was going to put the water slide, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe you two. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, that actually concludes uh, this episode of Spilling the Ale. Do either of you have anything that you would like to add? Any any anything that you'd like to discuss before, or anything you'd like to ask each other before we close? I I just want to thank Rothmar for for what he's done. Uh, like I, I don't know, you know, I my uh, our charity and D was my first time really hanging out with Rothmar, and I think I think he's been. I, I look forward to him coming back in in as, mi as much of a capacity as he can i look forward to the one shots so excited to be the biggest turd in all the one shots yes <laughs> i can put so much energy into a one shot now it's gonna be so much fun <laughs> and i will be the uh, at least one of those times i'll be the uncle character that keeps your character in line oh god guys now my heart talking. um <laughs> oh that's so good but yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there and like not not as an official because he's still got time 
we're still there, you know, but like this is our last spill in the ale. It's just been a lot. Rothbard's been a lot to me on the screen. There you all have, but like, I don't know. I just wanted to throw that out there. I agree. I concur wholeheartedly. Uh, Augustus has a whole lot of just uh, uh, a whole lot of depth and a whole lot of life. Um, just uh, he's I don't know. Every every character needs an Augustus or every party needs an Augustus is what I mean to say. Mm -hmm. um, Augustus is is the playlist that I play the most, even more than cues. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just it's a good <laughs> it's a comfy emotion for me. Mm hmm. Locke says she doesn't know who's going to keep you down to earth. And Locke, I think the answer to that question is me. I don't know. Like I'm going to have like, I think it's going to be cute. You guys are not going to be down to earth. <laughs> I'm just going to have to like, I think he's going to yeah. go full Milo and just start being real wise out of nowhere. And like, this is weird. Hell yeah. The gremlin. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my God. I never, I didn't put the Milo thing together, but you're right. Like I could see <laughs> um, that. Sorry for clarity. That's um, uh, Avatar: The Let Last Airbender, Korra, uh, yeah. Milo. Okay, I did you not see Milo energy, energy, but that's that is phenomenal energy. Most good. Well, thank you guys very much for uh, for hanging out tonight, and uh, all of you who asked questions and hung out in chat. Thank you so very much for your insightful questions and for uh, giving a shit. It really means it's so hard to get people to give a shit. And when they do, it like it means so much. Well, more than more than that, it's hard to give a shit these days. It, it, yeah, yeah. I'm out of shits to give, and yet I can produce them for this. Right. Okay. <laughs> wow, this means this must mean a lot if I can if I can summon a shit and then give it away to, to a group of people like this. I think that's about as good a note. That's a great like, place. If, if you want to if you want to fade us out, I feel like that's about <laughs> as good a place as any. Thank you all so much for hanging out. We love you. Meeting adjourned.